This is the Multifamily Journey Podcast, show 38. You're listening to the Multifamily Journey Podcast. In this show, you'll hear industry experts share tips of success and failure from their real estate investing journeys. You'll get a transparent look behind the curtain while you learn to fulfill the lifestyle you want to live and achieve your wealth goals. Get ready for the journey to financial freedom through investing in multifamily real estate. Here's your host, Blake Daly. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Blake, host of the Multifamily Journey podcast, and I'm excited because over this past week, I've heard two stories, not one, but two stories of people using the information from this show to help in their own life and their own business and actually taking action on it and making those changes and seeing good things come from it. So thank you to the to those people, to the guests who are making this happen and really just enjoying the show recently. Um, and I'm doing the same thing in my life, right? I'm on my journey. I'm making adjustments. I'm learning from people, people from this show and implementing that in my own business. So um, you're in good company there, I guess, because we're all we're all in this together. It's part of the journey. Um, and I've got one contract out right now that should be signed off by the time this airs. So finger cro- fingers crossed, knock on wood, been working on it for a while. Um, that's one I've, I've mentioned, I think, on the show. It's, it's taken some time. It's a Burr B&B property. So excited to get that one rolling. rolling. And yeah, it's fun stuff. But that's all I got on that side of things. And getting into the show, we got Charlie Wessel. He's actually my partner on the 66 unit in Greensboro, North Carolina. We did. Uh, we raised the money for that uh, deal together. Got in the deal. It's running, uh, going really, really well right now that the property is. So Charlie actually started out as a general contractor, didn't really, wasn't active in the investing side of things, but was active in commercial real estate, building, rehabbing, doing things for office buildings and, and retail spaces and talk to one of his broker friends in his local area. He's like, man, I, you know, seeing these big apartment complexes, how do I get into there, into that? And talk to this guy, gave him some pointers. And then Charlie being the kind of guy he is, went out, took action, built the systems to um, get out of his business and take in those same, those same things. And in that same success and go out in the multifamily space. And he's seen really good success, close three big deals, uh, over 23 million, I think in, uh, in assets now and got hundreds of units. And just, he's really impressive how he shifted career fields and had, uh, really big success in the multifamily space thus far. And what I love is how he's doing it with uh, these virtual assistants, which we'll get into. So I don't want to belabor it. Let's get into the interview with Charlie. Let's get in the show. All right, Charlie Wessel, my buddy, my partner. What's going on, man? Not much, buddy. Having a good time here in Charleston, South Carolina, man. That's awesome, man. Two, two Southern boys, I guess. Well, Southern located. I guess I'm not originally from the South, but I feel like my heart is from the South, you know? You got a <laughs> got little the, bit of the twain going on as yeah, well. I got the little rebellious nature, so. Yeah. You know, but, uh, but man, tell us, like, how, how you got started in this real estate game. What we're, what we're here to talk about. We'll, we'll just throw some of that Southern twang throughout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we had some um, rental houses, and that was just a nightmare. So uh, one day I was uh, riding past a big building and I used to own a general contracting firm. And so I did all work for uh, um, commercial real estate brokers. And one of my buddy's names was on the building. And I was, I called him up and I said, Hey man, how can I buy buildings like that? And he told me to come into his office. I went in that day and or the next day and he told me he said man you you really just you know you got to get some buddies and go knock it down and y'all raise some money and go buy them he said but that's office space he said i'll be honest with you what you really want is b and c class apartments and at the time i didn't even know what a b or c class apartment meant i didn't even know what that meant (laughs) Yeah. And he's like, I don't even sell them. All I do is office and warehouse. He said, but it's the safest investment out there. It returns money like crazy. Investors go nuts over it and everybody needs a house. Yeah, really good. And so not, I took not, him up not on. bad advice getting for your first time getting into, into commercial real estate for sure. Um, just yeah. for those, listen, can you actually break down what like the, the class is like B and C class, what, what the differences are and, the, and you know, that's what me and you focus on. So like, why is that good? I guess. Yeah. Um, I guess a, a B class would be considered kind of a, 
an upper upper middle class, you know, uh, apartment complex, um, you know, C class, but yeah, you know, and it's going to be in a, a really nice neighborhood. That's what you know. You look for like a B class. You may have the the Starbucks test. Yeah. Or like our midtown, know, it's like our midtown deal, right? Like it is close it's just to like really our good, midtown deal that we're in. How far midtown. is Starbucks from this place? And that'll tell you if it's a B class or a C class. <laughs> yeah, so you also, Foods, you're probably a class. If you got Starbucks right there, you'd probably be class. But Starbucks is yeah. in good areas too. So yeah, if Starbucks is within a mile, you're a B class. Yeah. If Starbucks is downstairs in the lobby, you're in an A class. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's that's even better. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Starbucks does all that data research on where to locate their oh, stores. So if you just like follow in their wake, you're doing good. But uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're alluding to uh, our Midtown deal in Greensboro, North Carolina. That's the the deal Charlie and I knocked down together with our, our other partners. Um, first one we did together, and we'll talk about a little that a little bit later. But um, but yeah, man, that's how that's how me and Charlie actually came to be was through this deal. And yeah, so good good stuff. I'll I'll get off the. Uh, the side note there, we can talk more about that deal later. But yeah, talking about uh, class properties, I guess we hit it there. Um, but I guess what I wanted to know is you, you're owning this GC firm and it sounds like doing really well there, right? You had the contacts and the commercial real estate, you know, ha having guys that are doing big deals, kind of handing down, uh, I guess, on a, on a silver platter. Here's all the multifamily knowledge you need to know. know. What made you want to do that rather than keep growing the, the GC firm? Um, I had little kids and I was working 60 plus hours a week. It was just a nightmare. So I actually, it was me and my brothers were partners in that. And I actually sold my, uh, my ownership in that company over to my brothers Okay. to start doing the multifamily investing and raising capital. Yeah. So that's like the... The, uh, the, the very common story, right? People getting caught up in their careers, no time. And that's why I love real estate because it can afford you that freedom to spend more time with your family, right? The passive income. That's why we that's all cool. get into this space. So I love that. And it's actually paying off now. So you get to see uh, going that's out cool. and riding four wheelers with the kids and side by side. Oh, yeah. As long as you're not smashing your hand up, you're doing yeah, all right. Exactly. <laughs> now I, I'm on every field trip that my kids go on with school. I'm yeah. there. You know, the, the school knows that I can be there anytime to help out with whatever they need. I love so, it. That's real dad goals right there. If that's not oh, it is. your it goals is. as a parent, that should be. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I love it. So how, so once you started learning about real estate, how did you get into that first deal? How did you go from, you know, owner of a GC firm into now, you know, I'm a commercial real estate investor and I own property? Yeah, it had a lot to do with me uh, networking, going to networking events. It's so huge. I mean, you, you hear it all the time that uh, that real, you know, commercial real estate is a team sport, and it really is. I mean, you really got to have a good team around you. Um, you know, we, we partnered up with some people uh, from Virginia, actually, on the first two deals that we did. Um, one of them was a 152-unit deal, and the other one was a 146-unit deal. And, uh, that, you know, it, it just kind of took off from there that they, they kind of, you know, asked me to come along and help raise some money for them and, and help out with some of the due diligence items and, and be a part of their, uh, their GP, which is their, uh, general partnership. And yeah. so it was, it went very well. Yeah. Very well. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about that. Let's break that down a little bit, because I think that's where a lot of people, kind of see themselves, right? They're, they're working this job and they want to just jump right in. It's, it's no small feat to go from, you know, nothing to this 150 unit apartment complex. And I always say like finding the right people, finding the partners and having the, the strength of the team is a big way to get there, right? So how'd you link up with these guys and how did you, you know, decide that you could go out and raise some capital and get in this deal and provide value to the partnership? Because I think that's important stuff. Well, I actually signed up for like a, um, a really great informational course on this mm -hmm. um, back in 2016, towards the end of 2016. 
And um, I flew up to Washington, D.C. a couple of times and went to this, um, you know, I hate to call him a guru, but he, he's, he's a guy that, that knows what he's doing. And they, they built a good team. And, I mean, there was easily 200 people there to, uh, to just talk about multifamily investing and how to raise capital for it. Yeah. If you're trying to get into this, like that's a good room to be in, right? Like 200 other people that are driven focused, you know, that are trying to make this happen. So absolutely. There was easily over a billion dollars worth of real estate sitting in that room. Easily. And, um, and so I do, you know, just networking around and I found my partners there at that, at that, uh, that program. Love it, man. Love yeah. it. Was it like, was it love at first sight or <laughs> take some, take well, some used to? I had heard them on podcasts, believe it or not. And it was a, uh, it, you know, when, when I went there and I just heard this podcast, like, I think it was even on the plane there. And he, and the guy was there who was being interviewed on the podcast. And so I went up to him. I think, you know, we had a couple of drinks or whatever. I met his partners. And yeah, I mean, I told him, you know, I'd love to come help you guys out. And he said, well, we're looking at some deals in the Carolinas. I said, man, I'm here. I'm here. I'm in the Carolinas. I'm in the neck of the woods, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm your boy, Blue. I'm your boy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we went and I went and traveled to the, to the apartments that they wanted to, you know, purchase. And, um, yeah, it kind of just went off from there. You know, I kind of got the gift of gab, especially with, you know, a cold, cold beverage in the hand with, with, the <laughs> that's when you really rise to the occasion, I, right? I you shine, man. Bring out all I the shine. stops and, and, and make it happen. <laughs> that's funny. So man, getting in that partnership, did it help with, uh, with you doing the due diligence and helping them like coming from that world of like seeing things from that G- GC perspective, you know, probably just like close your eyes and have like scope of work on the back of your eyelids to, to go in there and really help them on that side or, or did they kind of have that figured out already? Well, you did, you know, I did, I went, I go into it like that, but this is a totally different world. This is not where you have to go in and do everything. I mean, you hire third party contractors and third party people to do this. And when you go into a deal, I mean, you have a, you know, you, you most of the time you have a third party uh, property manager and they're lining that stuff up They They know the general contractors in the area. They know who can, you know, because not only are they doing the due diligence, but they're also kind of quoting it out for you mm-hmm. because they're going to be the ones that do the job. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah, which, you're gonna which is true too. Yeah. It's a great way to say no to answer that question in the, in the negative. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But for the, that, that, I mean, that's completely true though. Cause these, these property management firms, like the good ones anyway, are going to own, you know, probably hundreds or a lot of uh, units in that market already. Right. So they right. build out like, Hey, we're doing a, a, a low level turn to where it's paint, carpet, flooring, whatever that is. It's going to be this much per unit. If we're doing cabinets, countertops, they got it down to this much per unit. And they have the vendors for all that stuff. So that's a really good point. And that's why I love like commercial multifamily is because you can outsource these things. Like it's built in to the model, right? You take the payroll out of the property to pay the property manager to have the onsite maintenance and the staff. And they do all of that. So that's why it's so much more efficient than like you were saying when you started out with the, uh, the residential stuff, just like I did. And I was like, man. I don't want to freaking be doing all this stuff forever. I want other people to be doing this because they're going to do it better than me. No, so. that's why God made property managers. Is the manager. <laughs> they really do <laughs> do God's work. The good ones, man. If you find a good property manager, it it really sets everything up. Like what they're uh, doing in Midtown right now. That's um, that's exactly what we want, right? Somebody with deep roots in the in that area knows the market, lease, leases them quick, does the turns fast, like all that stuff. Absolutely, and she's doing a phenomenal job at twenty two hundred. <laughs> down as well yeah really for is. sure so man you you got into this first one what came next like how did you um roll that into the continued progress able to keep raising money and you know come into the foundation of, of your company cordell capital well i'll be honest with you man i hired a va i hired a va and it was just a total game changer like Love you know I, I went from running um general contracting firm um 
I mean, we only had, I think it was 12, 12 to 15 employees, but I mean, it was a multi-million dollar operation. I mean, it really was, it, you know, we did, you know, I think when, you know, the year I left, we were doing close to like, you know, three, over $3 million that year, just in mm -hmm. uh, revenue. And that's, you know, that's doing little office spaces, doing um, maintenance for these prop these commercial property managers. So, I mean, it wasn't any, like, you know, we had some big ticket guys in there, but not too many. You know, it was more smaller items, but we just did a lot of them. And so going from managing that um, to managing this business, I knew that there was a way that I could do this to where I didn't have to do everything like I tried to do before and take me 60 plus hours a week. So I hired a virtual assistant and I mean, oh my God. Game Changes shit. everything. It really does. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about that on a few times on this show. And I know earlier this year, I made a big push to start outsourcing stuff and it's helped me a ton. Like the amount of hours that I was spending, like back in you know November, December, January, as we were ramping up to, to close this deal and everything like, <laughs> and running the podcast and working full time and like doing my own deals uh, myself. There's a lot that goes into it, right? There's a lot of just administrative tasks that can weigh you down and to have that VA is huge. So I have a couple of them now. Um, but how did you go about hiring yours and implementing in, into your business? I know we talked about, what's her name, Michi, a few times. And she's like, she's Mafi. Yeah, she's Moffie. like, Mafi is like she's the best VA I've ever heard. Moffie, she's like your CEO now. Like Ms. Ms. Yeah, Ms. she's not even an assistant. She's like Charlie's chief life officer. Oh, dude, she is incredible. She's incredible. Um, I went through Rocket Station, which is a company that that ha has a uh, virtual assistants. Yeah, like and, a staffing agency. Yeah, it really is. It really is just for virtual assistants. And I mean, they they you know when I did it, I really didn't know what I could get them to do. I was like, you know, I don't even know if I'm gonna get somebody to be able to do it five hours a week. But I'd heard enough about it to know that we would grow into it. So I knew I had to start somewhere, even if it was just her cleaning up my email inbox or something, you know? And mm -hmm. so what they did is they, they basically, they interview you for like an hour on everything that you do. And I mean, they're pulling stuff that I do out, out of me that I, I just didn't even think about, you know? Yeah. And they basically come back with like a standard operating procedure for, for this virtual assistant to take over a thing and what she can do and how she can help you out i mean it, we hit the ground running and there was like a 20 hour a week option or a 40 hour a week option we, we went 20 hours a week for like a month that was it and then then it went to like 30 hours a week and it just recently has gone to 40 hours a week like full time but it has been kind of hit or miss here and there from 30 to 40 hours a week until, until that's now. Awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and I think that's just, that's really important because we, I talked about this on the last show. Um, and this was, this is me personally was looking at that before I ever hired anybody as a cost rather than an investment. But I think you're probably a testament to that, right? If, if you can, get somebody to take all these tasks off your plate that's an investment in your time because you're getting your time back because they're doing the administrative stuff and really freeing you up to focus on for you to focus on your biggest important goals like for you you know talking to investors and and client like investors is the, the highest value thing for you raising money for these big right. deals so the more uh admin tasks and content or whatever that that your assistant at mafia can put out that's bringing more people to you getting your phone ringing getting them into you you know your world of cordell capital and this is for anybody right this is for everybody listening kind of this is how the process works you have all that stuff that goes on behind the scenes right charlie and right they're doing a lot of that to funnel back whatever it is clients, you know, whatever your business is, clients, leads, whatever. And then that's when you do that high value task with converting them, bringing into the world. And then once they're in, you know, the assistant then manages just the, the stuff once they're in. So you can really uh, be doing the high value stuff, which is really awesome. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, something that you wouldn't even think about is 
just making a social media post every day. You know, I mean, yeah, I can type something. <laughs> oh, up yeah, this Facebook. is something. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to bring this up, but you keep going. I'm gonna jump in in a minute. <laughs> I mean, I, I could. I'm sorry, Blake. I didn't mean to jump ahead of you, bud. But it's just no. So... This is this is perfect. This is like right where I wanted the conversation to lead. I'm I'm laughing because uh, it just it got there naturally. It's so small because you know, yeah, you could type something up on Facebook or something, but no. I mean, she goes on like Canva and like designs this awesome post every morning first thing yep and puts it out there on facebook on linkedin on instagram which i don't even have instagram on my phone <laughs> that's what i was laughing about that's what i want to say is yeah, like she's, I'm serious. she's out like, there building even... you an instagram presence and you don't even have the, <laughs> yeah, the app yeah. downloaded on your phone oh we're on reddit you know i mean she's on all these different platforms and you know, yeah, I have Facebook, I have LinkedIn. Uh, the, you know, to me, LinkedIn is like the most important thing to me, but I, yeah. it's still nice to get you, you know, everything out there. So if somebody even comments on Instagram, she has to like screenshot it and she sends it through me to me through. Because <laughs> you don't have the app, so you're just texting. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any way to respond back to it. So, you know, I, uh, I just type the message back into Zoom to whatever response and, yeah. you know. Yeah, here, That's book so a funny. call. Yeah, for, for you guys that aren't quite grasping what we're talking about, go on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Look up Cordell Capital, C-O-R-D-E-L-L, -C -O Cordell Capital, and look at all these awesome posts. And these are, Charlie doesn't even <laughs> know what's going on. He just knows that they're going up. They look good. They get, you know, people uh, to, to see what you're doing, what, what kind of deals you're doing, you know, past progress, current, current stats and stuff like that. Um, and she's doing all that behind the scenes and then it's bringing investors into your world and you're not even thinking yeah. about it. That's yeah. Awesome. And, and she'll go through and she'll create like 20 of these, uh, posts on Canva and then I'll go on and there's two different folders. There's a create, there's a, a created and then there's a approved by Charlie. So I go in the creative and man, I just click and drag them. If I like them, I click and drag them. If I don't, I throw them away or I edit them real quick. And then I click and drag them. And I mean, it's, yeah, it's. Yeah. And this is probably too something that, that gets better over time, right? Like this probably wasn't perfect at the beginning, but it's just kind of this feedback loop of you telling her what you want, her giving you feedback on, you know, what she's good at. And it just, the whole process gets smoother. It's, it's just like hiring anybody, but with a VA, it's kind of like, it, it seems anyway, when what, and it's been my experience that's kind of less pressure uh, because you're getting them at really affordable rates to us. But to them, I mean, they're making a good living and good income, yeah. but it's like, and you're paying by the hour, there's no, there's no contract or whatever. Um, and you don't have to pay thousands of dollars to hire these people. You, you know, you pay like six or eight or $12 an hour, whatever it is um, and get really good service. So it's good stuff. Yeah, for sure. For awesome, sure. Man. Um, so your company Cordell Capital, I mentioned it before, uh, at Cordell, are you guys more focused on just raising the money? Are you um, interested in holding and managing the asset? Like, where does your guy, where does your strategy lie, and, and really, what's your strong suit and focus? We are focused on raising capital for the deals, as well as taking over some of the um, the investor relations roles yeah. for the deals that we're in. Um, you know, we try to, we, we're the ones that send out the monthly emails to, to investors, the updates, mm -hmm. um, you know, we carry the portal that they all log into and that they have access to their different investments on, um, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're just out there trying to really share this opportunity. I mean, I talked with a guy today who uh, has been a buddy of mine for a long time. And, um, you know, it, it was a great lunch. We had a good lunch and everything. And I, I, you know, I told him, I said, you know, man, I'm just here to share an opportunity. I mean, we don't, we have, we have investors. You know, we, we don't need somebody's money. We have money. We have people's money. We have, you know, we have investors that believe in us, believe in what we do. They have faith that we're looking out for them and putting their best interest uh, you know, forward. So it's really just about sharing an opportunity with people that they can invest in a way that wealthy people have been investing in for years. 
that we're all told, yeah, go put your money in a 401k, work your ass off your whole life. And then once get it when you're 65, you know, once once your hips and your knees are bad, then try to go have fun. Exactly. You'll have, you know, a million and a half in the bank or in your 401k, you can retire. And that's if the company you're working for doesn't go belly up and take all of your, you know, I mean, it's just, it's insane. Or the market crashes and you lose half your, half your money. I mean, this is brick and mortar investing, safest investment on the planet. It's housing, man. Everybody's got to have a house. You know, not everybody has to have a car. Not everybody has to have stock in Apple. Got to have a place to live, though. You got to have a place to live. You know, boxes, if you're living in a box, when it rains, they get wet and soggy. It's not going to do you any good. It's no way, man. It's no way. So, yeah, I mean, apartments, B and C class apartments or, you know, I mean, it's it's almost a no brainer. It really is. And I like that approach too. like, hey, you know, there's no pressure. But if you want to come into this, you know, great opportunity, there's other people that believe in it. We'd love to welcome you in. Right. Because we're like once you come into, you know, the Cordell Capital world or, or Blake's world, whatever it is, like we treat you like partners and that's what we are. And we're going out and doing these deals together and giving Absolutely. like giving back that lifestyle that, you know, hopefully earlier. Right. Kind of giving that passive income so you can go do what you want to do or, or save it up, reinvest it, whatever it is. But what I love about real estate is you actually get the cash flow and the tax benefits so that you don't have to wait to buy low, sell high. But you can take that that cash flow from those dividends and go reinvest. Right. And that's what I like about the birth strategy. That's basically what we're doing um, on big apartment deals is trying to uh, get velocity of money, get, get investors their money back so they can get into the next deal. Right. And just compound that. So just, it just keeps going. So I love when you can take that, like the birth strategy and put it in big apartment buildings. And it's like, you know, instead of pulling out 20 or 30 or 40 grand, you're adding a million or $2 of equity. Oh, son, when you get a refinance in year two, I mean, you've never seen such happy folks in your life. You just got all their money back. <laughs> I've been straight to the bank, baby, to get those participating. Checks. Yeah, they're still participating in receiving the passive income yep. from the property with the same amount of ownership. Yeah, there's it's, no better deal than, you know, putting in your 50000 or whatever it is for the syndication. Um, having it in there, you add the value, you refinance, get your 50000 back, and you cash flow for those two years or three years, whatever it was, you cash flow that yeah. whole time. You get your 50 grand back and then you hold for, you still get the cash flow, and then you sell and get more equity on the back end too. So yeah, and you take no risk. Once you're, yeah. yeah. And you reinvest it into another deal while yeah. this is, and you pair that with non-recourse debt, like you can on these bigger deals with the agency debt, it's non-recourse. So once you get your money out, when you refinance, you truly have no risk the, the right. loan's not tied to you. You don't have any capital in right. and you have a cash flowing asset. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Even if you get half your money back, it's beautiful. It's a no brand. I mean, it's, it's the greatest, uh, return on investment out there. It really. Yep. I like it, man. Awesome. So all that was a roundabout way saying that real estate is awesome. Uh, but I, I want to dig into the psychology a little bit here. Why you specifically like doing the capital raise side rather than, you know, being the asset manager. And, you know, I, I love raising the deals too. I mean, that's how I got into this space too. But I think, right, when you look at it, there's, there's two different business models and you can be like the manager um, and all that, or you can raise the money, which you have to have both pieces. And really in the syndication business, they're, they're like two separate businesses in a way. Absolutely. Conjoined to, it's like a marriage between those two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, man, when I get a cold bev in hand, I shine, dude. And I, you know, <laughs> we play, I mean, dude, I play golf, you know, we hunt, we fish, we do, we have a ton of extracurricular activities and we have a lot of buddies that do it with us. So it's just fun for me to get out there and it's fun to market. It's fun to think about different ways to, to, get your brand out in front of people. Um, as far as keeping your foot on the throat of the property manager, that doesn't, that doesn't, that's not fun to me. You know, I, I've, I've dealt with crayon eaters my whole life in, in the <laughs> construction. Industry. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm not, yeah, I, I just don't, you know, I, I'd rather go out and, and raise the capital. You know, that's the yeah. fun part to me. It really is. It really is. It's, yeah. Um, that you can't raise the capital without the guy who's going to manage the deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's those, what I'm saying. Are, those two sides, they need each other, but I mean, one or the other fits with different personalities really good. So I mean, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Like I love having the relationships, talking with people. Um, but I'm, I'm like meticulous how I run my properties too, 
but I just, yeah. I love that, you know, just building, building relationships and giving people access to these deals that weren't otherwise. So I, I think you're the same way. We've talked about that a few times, but that, that's what yeah. I like doing, man, is giving people like access to this, this, the real estate investments and the cash flow. You know, it's fun to, it's fun for me to like let pe other people in on that. I think so. It is. It is because it's almost like you're hooking them up. You know, you're hooking them up with an investment that's just going to, you know, you know, it's a safe and great investment. It's going to give them some mailbox money, man. Mailbox money, man. Need the mailman to visit my house more often. You know what I mean? <laughs> you. You. Hey, so I want to transition a little bit to talk about the 66 unit that we bought together in Midtown yeah. um, in Greensboro. So you are the ba you're basically the one that brought me into it through the connection with Jake. So you're kind of the glue that made this whole deal happen. So I want to hear from your your perspective how the whole deal came to be. Well, it, you know, Michael and Scott, our other partner, you know, the guys that found the deals. Yep. Um, they're like they're the asset managers, the deal runners of that partnership, like we were just talking about. Like Charlie and I and our other buddy Jake, we brought the money and investor relationships and the portal and all that, like you were saying. Right. And these guys got their finger on the pulse of the deal and are doing doing a great job with that. Yeah, yeah. So it's always good when you have a lawyer and a developer come to <laughs> yeah, you. I was gonna say we we really got the uh the best yeah, that. come to you and say, Hey man, we got a great deal. We really wanna, you know, we really want you to come in with us and partner up with us and see if see if we can't raise the capital for this deal. And it, it just, you know, I mean they're they're both just super sharp guys, you know. Uh uh Michael Lewis and Scott Stamps. Great guys here in Charleston. They're based out of Charleston. Um yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like I get like I feel right like I learn like, something new every time I like get an email or like we talk to Michael. I'm like, oh, there's something, some other little detail of like contract negotiation or something, you know, like all the closing credit credits we got. Yeah. Uh, and the negotiation was with the vendors. I'm like, oh man, he's on it. These guys negotiated like, you know, like some of Trump's top men or something. I mean, I'm serious. Yeah. These guys, they they really knocked it out of the park on this deal. They did too. But and this is something like I've never heard here. anybody talk about on like a podcast, a YouTube video or whatever is like what Michael did in that contract negotiation. I was like, man, this is the strength of having an attorney on your team, right? He just, he went in and oh man, the vendor contracts, he like, we're not assuming those. So um, right on, the, right off the bat, we saved money on our, we saved money on expenses that helped our NOI. And then actually got a payback from the cable company and then yeah. all this other stuff, lender uh, closing credit from the, uh, from the seller. He was like, man, this, this is, he said this in an email. I thought this was so funny. He's like, this is what just turned a great deal into a freaking great deal. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here's oh, yeah. Oh yeah. And Scott being a developer, I mean, you know, that's all he does is negotiate land and everything else to develop yeah. to develop his houses and stuff so yeah yeah I mean, and what i really like about oh, yeah. this uh like our, our partnership with them too is like i didn't want them necessarily you know out picking up phones trying to raise all the capital like i wanted them to do those things because that was their yeah. highest and best use was to get all that set up and really have their finger on the pulse with the property so it really Absolutely. benefited them too to bring in guys that are you know good with relationships got the capital ready to go so that they can focus on what they're really good at so Absolutely. i mean I, I think the, the partnership like worked out in the timing the timing couldn't have been better on it too and i think we'll have some happy investors at the uh at the end of this one so oh yeah hey man and uh, you know hopefully these boys dig up another one here real soon <laughs> i know that's what i was saying i was emailing michael the other day i was like hey man if uh if you find another one let's, let's do this thing i got yeah. I, yeah i think too after everybody like sees you close a deal too like you probably seen this after they see you close one then all those other people that didn't come into that one they're like oh man i gotta get the next one i want the next oh, one i know it. which is yeah. cool man because when you find good deals like i you know this is a, a deal I would have put a bunch of money into if I had it. So, I mean, on the GP, we, we put in a lot collectively, but this is one I would have put more into because I really like the strategy, the location, the property. So it's yeah. like, for me to feel that way about a property, I'm like, man, I want other people to come into this deal too. You know what I mean? Right, right. So. I know, especially when you see a kind of a home run like that, you know, it's hard not to because we have to build our own capital in order to participate in the other deals that are going on, you know, because you need hard money. Yep. You need due diligence money. 
I mean, there's certain amount of cash you need on every deal. Yeah. I mean, there can be like tens of thousands of dollars you pump in before you ever close, especially with the EMD. I mean, those are usually 50, 50 grand to a hundred grand to, on this size of yeah, deal. That easily we're over a hundred thousand dollars on every yeah, deal. You and then you're talking up. about the due diligence expenses, yeah. and, and the contract, all, all that kind of stuff in there. Like stuff is expensive, oh, yeah. you know, the yeah. uh, environmental reports, all these things, like they cost, uh, they are not cheap. Let's say that. So it yeah, takes money huh? to be able to do these deals. That's why I always like cringe when I hear somebody saying, oh, you can invest in multifamily with, with no money. And I'm like, well, shoot, somebody's paying for it. Somebody in the partnership's paying for it. So somebody you, better, bring, you, you better be bringing a lot of value if you're not like, you know what I mean? If you're just yeah. getting like truly no money. So you can't always be a pretty face and a smile like us, Blake. <laughs> you know? got to bring some skills sometimes, <laughs> man. That's funny. Um, that's good stuff, man. I, I thought that'd, that'd be good to bring up that deal as our most recent one. And um, yeah, hopefully Michael finds us a, another one going forward. Um, and real quick, before we transition to kind of this last segment of the show, we talked, I should have brought this up when we we're talking about the VA. Um, but what are some of the tips that you have in managing your VA? Cause she's like, you're, you're one employee now leaning on her a lot. So what are the, some of the tips you have, and balancing your day-to-day -day operations with her she is she's she's my one employee right now as a matter of fact as of today she's actually hiring another one on upwork nice. and i'm totally giving her that project i turned it over to her i'm letting her hire the person that she wants i like it man that's a truly like out. who not how have you read that book I got it right now. Uh, I just got it. I should. I feel like the last like two or three weeks, I've talked about it on every podcast I've done because that was like it, that changed my perspective in this uh, scenario of like the author talks yeah. about doing this. He has a person on his team who hires all the new people on his team. He's like, I love it. Yeah. No, I'm in. I'm in uh, Hunter Thompson's Raise Masters Mastermind. Oh yeah. And as soon as you get in that, that's the first thing he sends you is the who not how. Book. And I'm telling you, I mean, I'm halfway through it right now. And um, yeah, I was just reading it earlier today while I was uh, eating some lunch. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a great book. The um, I tell you, man, you know, turning over some ownership to her, you know, she handles all my email, social media. Um, I even have her now writing some some content for us since she's been doing this for a year now. It was a year in. Uh, it was a year last month, as a matter of fact, that she started with me. And now she knows so much from me sending her books. And she's, yeah, I'm always sending her like a podcast or sending her a webinar for her to watch because I want her to learn this stuff. And I'll be honest with you, you know, we, we pay her, you know, $12 an hour through Rocket Station right now. Um, but I want her to grow with Cordell Cowan. I really do. And I see her really soon making some really good money. Um, and, I, you know, I, I've always been one to share the wealth. Like, there's never going to be, you know, the head guy who makes all the money and then all these little workers below him that, you know, can hardly make ends. Everybody's so, going to be out at the golf course <laughs> listen, teeing off together. Rising tide floats all boats, brother. Yep. So we're going to bring everybody up with us, you know, and, and Mafi is definitely leading the team. She is uh, just sharp as she can be. Um, and the guys at Rocket Station, they, they've been uh, just a crucial part of the whole. I know, man, Rocket Station's going to love you after all this stuff. They're going to get a, a whole new book of business. Yeah, well, you know what? And I, I, and I mentioned them to them because, you know, it's the – the listeners here, I mean, I talked to them today. I said, hey, look, man, what kind of discount can you give the listeners for, for signing up with you guys? Because it's made such a huge difference in my life that uh, they're giving me like 250 bucks off of the onboarding process where they basically write your whole operating procedures out for you. But, you know, as far as like the content goes, I mean, she's actually hiring uh, an editor slash copywriter right now to go back and because you know she'll usually i'll send her a few articles and and we'll we'll talk about it and then she just writes you know she'll write a whole page on it. you know i mean she wrote a 16 page like ebook 
Now I've been going. Back <laughs> I love this story. Yeah. Yeah. She wrote my whole ebook. <laughs> she did. She wrote my whole freaking ebook. So this is totally going to discredit me among a lot of people, but I don't even care. <laughs> no, you're I, doing awesome, man. This is how it should be set up, right? You want like I'm ownership serious. of those processes, but you, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, this, for me, this book, the co-author of Who Not How didn't even write the book. Like all his yeah. ideas, he's not the one that wrote it, you know? Right, right. So yeah, it's. And I mean, for me to sit down and think about how to write a 16 page book, I'm a contractor, man. <laughs> It's never going to happen. Like that would never happen. Give some crayons that you sit in the corner. You'd be all right. Oh yeah. No, I just eat bigger crayons than they do. That's all it is. But I tell you, man, we, uh, she writes, you know, all this amazing content. And then I go back and what I do is I edit it so that it's more my style. You know, it's, I bring it into my language, my style, my, you know, my everything, um, add my thought processes behind it. So at least I don't have to start from scratch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't have to take a month and a half to write a four page paper on why the stock market sucks and investing with us is way better. Yeah. You know, she That's what I try too with my VA, but I got to get somebody who, who writes a little bit better. Um, yeah. So that's, that's my next, that's well, my next see, investment. She gets me going. She gets it going. And then I take it and just edit it from there. Look, man, can I pay you to have Mafi train my VA? <laughs> That'd be you, perfect, brother. man. We'll just make her like the VA trainer. And she's going to teach. She's going to take like, her brain out do, and put it in other VA's heads. Yeah, gonna we're going to do part. deals together for the next like 30 years, dude. So yeah. I'll donate the time right now yeah. hey i tell you what as long as mafia's your va i'll invest with you <laughs> she's all gonna all she's gonna keep you on track <laughs> she's amazing, dude. She's amazing. that's awesome man i love she's it i love this stuff man i hope i hope more people hear this and and do something with it right like they are vas are, are so cheap and so easy to start using and you might not even know you need them or maybe you do but don't know how to use them like charlie said but with those uh, staffing agencies like they'll map it out They'll map your processes out or just sit down and literally just freaking write out what you do. Like, Hey, here's my task. I post on social media on Tuesdays. I, you know, do this. I got an ebook. Here's what I want to put in it. Um, all these little things, you know, I got to upload a podcast. I got to, you know, put in this offer or whatever, like, um, checking emails. Holy cow. I, I spend so much time in my inbox. So oh, all those little things I can help with. This is, this is good stuff. Man. I'm glad, I'm glad people are hearing this from you, Charlie, because you're doing it the right way. Um, and it's, it's paid off a lot. Like I've seen, I've seen it pay off the content and then more investors are coming to you. So that's awesome. Um, but with that, man, what's, what's your focus going forward? What's, what's the, you know, the rest of 2021 look like for you continue to grow this thing? It looks great, man. Like I said, we, we, you know, I'm in that mastermind with Hunter Thompson and Adam Carswell. <clears throat> it's, that is just phenomenal. That is, it really is just boosting me by, you know, by years in the yeah, Hunter Thompson's got a great book too. Uh, raise, raising capital for real estate, right? Right, right. I just read it a few months ago. It's a good book. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm focused on raising capital. You know, we're we're pumping content out there. We're looking for investors all the time that you know want a solid investment. And besides that, man, I'm a I'm a husband and a daddy. You know, I've been married 20 years this year. Got three awesome kids. You know, 11 year old son and twin seven year old girls. We ride dirt bikes. We have a Can Am side by side that's oh, just man. ridiculous. I need to get out to Adventure World with y'all next time. You do, man. Next Carolina time the military Adventure lets World. me away for a little bit on some leave, we'll make it happen. It's insane. Yeah. Man, yeah. that's awesome, man. Cool, so man. Well, let's fun. transition now to the uh, the last segment. So we'll get into the the Fortune Five. All right, Charlie, here we go. These are the five questions I ask every, every investor, every guest um, each week here on the podcast. Fortune five. So kicking it off, number one, what is the biggest thing that has contributed to your success? Oh, man, I hate to say this, but I, I, we've been talking about it the whole time. I mean, Mafi, my, my, my virtual assistant, um, my family and be honest with you, the mentorship programs, the masterminds, all, all that stuff really, I mean, it takes you to a whole nother level. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's huge, man. I think people that discredit those, those, uh, coaching programs, probably like I did a lot in the beginning. Uh, you got um, yeah, you, you got to yes. use something like that, even if it's, um, you know, paying for like the reduced version of the content or whatever, like you get so much good material from those. And yes, you can learn it, you know, trial and error just by doing it, but it's going to lower your, your learning curve. And I haven't went through a trading program, but I've heard tons of good stories. So if you're like starting from zero to, you know, get to where, you know, me and Charlie are even above that to get to that point, like definitely jump on one of those, but, uh, cool. So what's been the biggest mistake so far that's turned into a learning lesson for you? Um, I would say not taking action faster, to be honest with you. I've let a lot of deals slip through mm. by me being afraid. I mean, we're dealing with other people's money here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, I'm the same way, man. Super, it super terrifies cautious. me, man. I've got to look at you. Know, I can lose my money. I can't lose your money. Yeah. So I'm so conservative. And it has hindered me from getting into some good deals. Yeah, I, you know, I'm kind of like right there with you. I've always been one to take action, but I'm, I'm too, a little too cautious. And now looking back, like, especially last year when things were more uncertain, I was like, I don't know if I want to get into this deal, you know, because I don't want to risk investor capital. And then, yeah. you know, looking back a year, nine months, whatever, later, look at these deals. I'm like, man, those are actually performing pretty well. And you know, when they go to refinance rates will be even lower here in like the next, you know, year, whatever it is. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's not procrastination. It's just getting lost in the details. Yeah. And I just get too deep in the details and I, you know, so yeah. yeah the overanalyzing. I mean, I think it's, you know, probably better to be cautious than overzealous. No, um, absolutely. But you can be cautious and still, you know, yeah. Still make out. it happen. Still. You still, still make it happen. Right yeah. yeah. Which we're still <laughs> making it happen, but you know, yeah, that's good. So what is your favorite book that you'd recommend to someone starting out? Um, I would say, uh, I really would say, you know, raising capital for real estate from Hunter Thompson. I mean, it's, it, you can't have a deal without raising capital. Yeah. And you, I'll be honest with you, you know, they say that if you find the deal, the money comes that's a load of crap. <laughs> we found out after for a minute on the Midtown deal, didn't we? Like we had the whole deal funded in like five days and then some people dropped out. We're like, Oh man, yeah. you know, we yeah. got to get back on the horse here. I know. I don't. And I mean, it's, it's that way in every deal. I mean, the money doesn't just come, you know, if you build it, it comes, that's crap. And I even wanted to say a worse word than that, but I'm not. And it's just, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you got, you got to, yeah, you, you have actually have to do, both at the same time, like you have to be raising money and you have to be looking for deals. So right. it's like, it's not a chicken and the egg problem. I mean, it kind of is, but like do both. So that's a really good, yeah. really good point. And that's a great book for that too. Cause it's like focused on, you know, um, a syndicator's perspective of just raising money. That, that's how Hunter Thompson does. He does the, the fund to funds, right? So he's only raising money and basically vetting sponsors and their backgrounds and stuff like that, right. bringing right. in his fund, investing in these deals and, you know, making the spread there. So good stuff, man. So outside of real estate, I know we talked a little bit about the, you know, riding dirt bikes, spend time with the family, but what do you like doing outside of real estate? You know, go, we golf. I mean, I live five doors down from the, the pro shop here at Stono Ferry. So I live here on hole number nine. Uh, okay. But besides golf, I mean, me and the family, we spend a lot of time together. Um, I have a lot of fun with my kids. I have a lot of fun with buddies too. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, I do live five doors down from the pro shop. So, you know, yeah. we can walk home if, if need be. <laughs> <laughs> if, it gets, if, if it gets to be one of those nights. Oh yeah. Yeah. If it gets to be like that on the golf course, we can always just take the golf cart home. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, That's yeah, why the golf you carts know, have scratches and dings there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've got a uh, complete arsenal that I plan on losing in a boat accident here real soon. <laughs> I mean, you know, we do a lot of really fun. Oh man. Stuff. I don't know what I laughed this hard on the podcast yeah. yet. I'm, yeah. I'm just going to, people just hear my belching laugh through the speakers. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> That's right. I mean, dude, you know, we, we live here in Charleston, South Carolina. 
I mean, it's it's one of the most beautiful places on earth, man. Man, so much I love Charleston. Charleston is probably my favorite city that I've been to. I've been like around the world through Europe. I love I love Charleston. Yeah, man, we got a boat, and so you know we have a good time. Man, now you got me thinking about Charleston. I'm gonna have to come visit you. You know what? Come on, back up the car. We're we're coming. <laughs> come on, son. Come on. We love awesome. having you. All right, last question, Charlie. Where can people find out more and connect with you? Uh, CordellCapital.com. Yeah, we have a, uh, you know, investors group there. Sign up and schedule a call. Um, you know, uh, you can give me a call if you want. Uh, 843-200-9552. That's my personal number. Um, yep. Actually, other, please like, don't, Capital. please don't text Charlie First, please go on Instagram to Cordell Capital. Message him there, so yeah. Moffy will text him, and then he'll text back Moffy to text you. Exactly. Him. Yeah. That that one. That's got to get. That's got to get resolved. You know, we, we got to take. No man, I love it. Download. It works out. Just download the app. You know, I'm gonna have to download Instagram. I already yeah. see it. Coming. That's awesome, man. Yeah, definitely go check out Charlie, man. One of my uh, favorite partners so far. This has been awesome, man. Thanks for coming on the show. This is this is good stuff. Showing that. Man, if you if you get the education, like you're saying, take action, you can make it happen. Absolutely. Hey, Blake, I'm gonna drop that uh, drop that uh, discount uh, link to Rocket Station in your show notes. Oh, yeah, you guys, check out Rocket Station too. Um, we'll put that in the show notes. Um, so check that out. But Charlie, appreciate it, man. And we're out of here. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like the show, if you found value in it, please go to iTunes and leave a rating and review. If you want to check out more on your multifamily journey, go to multifamilyjourney.com where you can get free resources to start your journey and figure out your path. That's multifamilyjourney.com. But more importantly, go take action today towards your financial future. See you next time.